Today's a bit of a different video. We're gonna do a backcountry gear review. We're up here in Alta, and we're gonna ski the uh, Patsy Marley trees. Just started skinning up, so we're a little out of breath. Um, so today we're gonna talk about probably our five uh, favorite pieces of gear and techniques for backcountry skiing. We all have our favorite uh, backcountry uh, gear. It's all very personal preference. Usually when I'm looking at different uh, videos on backcountry gear, I'll disagree with a lot of stuff because it's a lot of personal preference. So take all this with a grain of salt, but my list for the five things are my hydration system. So I've got a little sleeve on my, on my pack. I've had a few questions about those in the comments, so I'll talk about that. Uh, my glasses that I use instead of wearing ski goggles. Um, a shell puffy combo, essential. Uh, my puffy over gloves, I love those things. And my 45 liter backpack, which is a little bigger than most people have. What are you gonna talk about, Paul? I'm gonna talk about some things that I've learned over the years, uh, just things that I like bringing in the backcountry with me. Always bring a radio, and your whole crew has a radio. We'll talk about that. Um, some other things are some materials that I really like bringing on my clothes. So I'm gonna talk about these soft shell pants. Um, and the wool base layers and neck gaiter that I wear. And I'm gonna talk about, uh, I have a Phoenix watch, talk about some features that I really like there. Nice. And some uh, Hyperlite uh, packs, um, little bags that I always keep in my pack to keep things organized. So, yeah. yeah. Those are the essentials. So we'll go through, show you those, and talk about those on our ski today. I think uh, probably my favorite thing out of all this stuff is probably these glasses. These are the Smith uh, Wildcat glasses. I've done a review on them on my channel, which I'll link down in the description. And actually everything we talk about today will be linked down in the description. So if you want to check any of this stuff out for yourself, uh, head down there. Um, I really like these because I feel like you don't need to bring goggles if you have these because they're huge. I mean, literally, you can see how big they are. They cover about half my face. Looks like Hollywood out here in, in the Wasatch. But uh, yeah, I mean, they block the wind, they block, block the precipitation. It's one less thing to transition when you get up to the top. Makes it a bit quicker and then your friends don't yell at you for taking too slow. Paul also has them. He's got a different lens. He's got the black lens, but yeah, uh, we really, really like them. One thing I didn't cover in the review video that I wish I had actually, is you can swap out these lenses. So um, I've got the red one, he's got the black one. They have different, uh, what do you call it? They have a low light one. No, but like what do you call the amount of light that it lets in? Percentage. Percentage, yeah. Light percentage. It lets in a certain amount of light each lens so you can kind of adjust it to the day. Uh, there's like low light ones that are almost clear, like amber, you have those, right? Yeah, I have the low light ones yeah. and then the clear ones. Yeah. And the perks of that is you look like a mad scientist, so. And if you ever go skiing at night, uh, oh, yeah. the clear lenses are really nice. Yeah, true. Yeah. yeah, and if it's like snowing too. Yeah. Because then you can protect your eyes and still see. You don't have to have the dark lenses. One of the things I want to talk about that I bring into the backcountry when I go touring is my Garmin Phoenix watch. This is the 6X. Um, I've had this thing for about a year. Um, I absolutely love it. It has some amazing features to bring into the backcountry. One of my favorites is um, it links up with Strava. So every time I do a tour, it'll post directly to Strava. It doesn't, it's not like the Apple Watch where you have to like hit it to like upload it, which I think is really annoying. It'll automatically upload. And then you can take, you can, from Strava, I mean this is more of a Strava thing, but you can export that map and then import it into Caltopo, which is really great. So you can aggregate all your tours and then kind of see what worked, what didn't work on that tour and, yeah. and change your- uh, Yeah, it's really useful. Yeah, it's super useful. Um, other things that I love about the watch are just generic um, data points that you can get while you're touring. Um, current elevation is really awesome. I have a few different pages. You can set up different pages. Um, elapsed time and bearing is really helpful um, to know like what aspects you're, you're on for, um, for avalanche danger. I use that a lot. I didn't even know I had that. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's a really great thing. Um, and the other thing that's really great, especially with the Phoenix rather than like the Forerunners, um, is it has uh, maps built into it, so you don't even have to download maps onto the watch. You can just go straight to the map, and if you're on pretty much any trail, that map, that trail will be on the on the watch. All ski areas, trails around ski areas are awesome. So if I'm on a place and I don't really know, but I didn't put the the map, like you can you can import 
um, GPX files onto it. But if you didn't do that, you can still see where you are, like in the area. Yeah. Which is just tremendously helpful. Didn't we use that in New Hampshire when we were doing like we that little did. traverse we did in May or whatever? For I used it on the uh, when we did Brandon Gap. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, I've just used it countless times, especially in hiking in the summer. I mean, yeah. this watch is amazing. And the battery lasts. I mean, you can do three, four, even five um, like recording sessions and the battery will, will still be there. So uh, I, rec I, I charge it like once a week and I use it three, four times a week for recording purposes. So definitely recommend this watch. The nice thing about these radios is you can talk over distances and they're super convenient because they attach right to the strap of your pack. So this is the BCA Link 2.0 radio. Um, we all carry these in the backcountry. The, they're a little bit pricey, um, but we think I think the convenience of having uh, this type of radio makes it worth it. So some of the things that are awesome about this radio is all the buttons for controlling um, channels um, and volume are on the microphone, which is super cool. And then the 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 antenna and everything on the radio is in your pack, which we'll show later in the video. Um, it's really convenient, it clips right to your shoulder strap um, and you always have it with you. So it's really helpful um, in uh, avalanche terrain, we ski point to point um, or we leapfrog each other. And so whenever we get to a safe spot, uh, we usually radio the other person that it's safe to go um, or where the good snow is on the, uh, on, the, on the run. So definitely pick one of these up and carry these in the backcountry with your buddies. I've had this Nerona 45 liter Lingen backpack for the last when did I get that? Last winter sometime? Yeah. I like it a lot. Before that, I had the Black Diamond Dawn Patrol 32 liter, which was really cool. But um, one time we went up to the top of Mount Mansfield in Vermont, and I had a shell with me, puffy, extra layer, some tea, water, stuff to make videos with, and I was stuffing that thing. I was like, it's time to get a bigger backpack. So ended up getting this. And uh, I mean, I like this backpack. I would recommend it to anyone, but. For me, it's just more about the bigger size. I think that that's better. Um, for me as like a filmmaker, videographer, um, I can fit a lot of video equipment in here. That's uh, like something that might not be for everyone because not everyone makes videos, but I can fit a drone in here, the DJI Mavic Air 2. I can fit my uh, camera, which is Paul's holding right now. <laughs> I can fit a GoPro, um, a little stand and that. Uh, like two liters of water and then I got an extra liter or a half liter right here and I just really like the bigger size because I feel like I don't have to stuff it full um, and then when you're taking stuff out of the backpack you don't have to um, like root around and take stuff out to get a jacket out you can just grab it because it's right there so maybe it's a little overkill but I kind of like that um, just in general some important things for backpacks is that have a helmet carry, that's important. Um, otherwise, it's like dangling off the back and I don't know, you look like a rookie. Another thing is this avalanche safety pocket. So in here, keeps my shovel probe, the rest of the shovel's down there. And if I, I'm bringing a snow saw, I'll keep it in there too, so. Um, that's kind of it. It's maybe a little overkill, but I really like it. One piece of material that has really worked for me in the backcountry and that I always look for in all the clothing that I wear is wool. Um, I wear it in my pants. This, these are Ortovox pants. Um, all Ortovox clothing has an element of wool, whether it's a blend um, with other materials, but um, wool is really, really good in the backcountry because as you skin, whether I'm ice climbing or just skinning, you're gonna get sweaty um, and wool as it gets wet and damp, it retains a lot of its moisture qualities. So it's a really, really, really great material to bring into the backcountry. Um, never skin and wear cotton uh, as a base layer or anything on when you're skinning because as cotton gets wet, it is a really, really bad at keeping you warm. So I always look for things that are, that are wool. Uh, I have a Nerona wool base layer. Um, I look for a little bit higher wool um, blends in my base layers just because those are the things that can get the sweatiest. And then these are more of a blend um, in the pants. So we've been skinning for maybe oh, about two miles and a little, a little lengthy because uh, we've been filming a lot on the way up. But for me, hydration is key. So like I've got this hydration pouch right here 
Uh, it's a DinaFit insulated water bottle holder with an insulated water bottle. And so I'll just, you know, take a sip out of this every now and then. I'm showing you how to drink out of a water bottle. That's the content you'll only get on this channel. <laughs> um, I really like it because you can just drink all the time. I mean, you know, everyone has that touring partner that has the camel back and the insulated sleeve and they think that's gonna work and it never works. So uh, this is kind of the way to do it. And then I'll have a pouch in my backpack that I'll fill with like warmer water and I'll refill this bottle maybe when we get to the top. Um, you know, it's a good thing to do while you're transitioning. This way you could stay hydrated and uh, it really makes a big difference. One of my favorite gear pickups of the season so far. A little bonus feature that we're gonna do, just as we're skinning, I'm gonna stop right now and talk about. But one thing that I really look for, that I just recently started doing this year, was putting my beacon in a pocket. A lot of people wear it as a chest mount, which is totally fine. But I find that bending over, sometimes like getting in the way of your pack, uh, just didn't work for me. So, um, the pant you gotta look for a pair of pants that has a uh, clip and it's an internal pocket, not like you'd find on cargo pants. So your beacon doesn't accidentally get ripped off your pants if you are involved in an avalanche, but definitely um, recommend putting it in, in a pair of pants. Um, it just stays out of the way, um, and it's really nice in there. Um, definitely want to keep it away from your cell phone because cell phones can inter interfere with the uh, radio waves, but definitely give it a try. One thing that I have like I guess experienced or noticed, well I guess I haven't experienced it because I haven't had to do any actual avalanche rescue, but we've done a bunch of drills and uh, one thing that I think is you want your avalanche beacon, your transceiver to be in a convenient location. So if it's under a bunch of layers, that adds some layer of safety. That's true. But also you want to be able to access it quickly. So also just keep in mind that we're not professionals and this is just our opinion, so do some research before you decide where to put your beacon. Yeah, and practice. If you want to leave it in your pocket, practice with it there. Uh, just so when you are in an emergency, you're ready to go. So, I know I'm just a guest on this channel, but McLean makes some pretty kick-ass videos. He's really up in his quality game. And he's doing some pretty unique videos in the Wasatch, so give it a like, give him a follow, and write some comments. Do it. Almost at the top of Patsy Marley. Usually when you're up on a ridge, it's pretty darn windy. So I like to carry a shell with me. I think that that really helps uh, like block some of the wind, keeps it a little warmer. Kind of the name of the game in backcountry skiing is layering. Usually I wear a uh, merino base layer like Paul talked about. I wear this mid layer that's fairly warm but really breathable. And then I'll have this shell that I'll put on, fairly lightweight. And then if it's really cold, or if I need some extra insulation on the ski down. I'll have a puffy to put right over it. And you know, all these things together help to keep me really warm. Usually I would take my skins off and transition, but I'm gonna talk a little bit about one of my favorite pieces of gear. And that's it, that is these little bags that I keep in my pack. I think staying organized makes it really easy to grab things when you need them. And everything's just not shoved into your pack so you just know where things are. So I carry these Hyperlite bags. Um, I keep my gloves, like extra hats and white stuff in here. This is the large size, a little big, but really like them. And then, you know, all my emergency stuff. Uh, you know, I have an emergency bivy med kit. Um, keep a headlamp in here, so keep all that organized. And then, 
This one I keep a puffy and down mittens in here for any types of emergencies if it gets really cold. So keeping all this stuff organized is awesome. Uh, makes you makes it really easy to keep your bag organized and be able to find stuff. And I really like the Hyperlite packs. They're kind of, these these bags are shaped like your pack, so they just kind of like stack on top of each other. So it's super super awesome. They're awesome stuff. Um, and even just like teeny little ones like this, like this one I came with a Petzl harness and I just keep some sunscreen in here uh, and a knife. So love keeping things organized and having uh, little bags for everything. So this is my last uh, piece of advice, my last piece of gear. These are the Ski Trap Gara over gloves. And I mean, maybe I've said this before in the video, but these are really some of my favorite pieces of gear. Uh, they pack down really small, they're really light, but they're incredibly warm. It's all tore up in these uh, black diamond, uh, like lightweight gloves. And then when I get to the top, like right now, I'll just slip these on right over and that's that. And they're really warm. They're basically like a puffy for your hand. Um, and another great feature is you can stick your fingers out of the middle like that. So if you have to use a beacon or quite uh, more frequently, I'm using a camera. So this helps a lot with photos, video, uh, just gives you a lot of dexterity. I absolutely love these gloves. I would recommend them to anyone.